I pledge allegiance to the flag. Oklahoma flag salute. I salute the flag. Please stay standing for the moment of silence. You may be seated. Talk fast. Okay. Go Waller. We are Waller. Testing continues this week with math and makeups. Tri-state competitions are this week. Good luck to all going to compete. This week is Teacher Appreciation Week, so be sure to thank your teachers for all they do for you. Friday, we will have extended club times to continue preparation for the Maker Fair. Today, students should bring planners to lunch for a reward. Today is also Darian's birthday. Student council elections will be held next week, so for anybody interested, for any seventh graders interested, I'm going to have my officers come up and explain what each office does so you know whether you're interested in running or not. All right. I'm, I'm reading for vice president and president. So, to achieve the offices of president and vice president, you must campaign as president. The candidate with the highest amount of votes wins the presidency, and the second highest wins the vice presidency. The Stuco president oversees all council events. He or she will set the agenda and dates for all upcoming meetings. The Stuco vice president will act as president in the event of the president's absence. The vice president oversees all Stuco activities. The secretary is responsible for taking accurate notes at all meetings and sharing those notes with the Stuco sponsor. The Stuco historian is responsible for documenting all important student council events. He or she will take photographs and report all happenings on the school's student council social media accounts. The treasurer will, is responsible for keeping a record of the financial accounts. He or she will decide the best use for funds and will alert the council when additional money is needed. So, whoa, hello. <laughs> Sorry. For all seventh grade students interested, you should come to my classroom at lunchtime on Friday this week. Um, get a to-go lunch, and you can eat in my classroom. I will answer any questions regarding campaigning. And just so you know, potential candidates will put up posters, give a short speech, and make a brief video to be shown in advisory. The campaign will last one school week. Thank you. showing us how to hula.
Our speaker today is Ms. Wiebner. She is speaking about people with disabilities. Thank you. Hello, good morning. Okay, we're more alike than different. It's kind of my theme for today. Every time that I say that, I want you to respond to me, though. We're going to do a call and response. I'm going to say we're more alike, and you say than different, okay? We should practice. We're more alike than different. I think you can do better than that. We're more alike than different. Excellent. Raise your hand if you know someone with a disability. That's impressive. Okay. Thank you. When I was your age, oh wait, when I was your age, I may not have raised my hand or I would have had to think about it a little bit more. Um, but uh, when my youngest sister was born, I have two sisters, Riley, she's 24 and Raiden is 17. When Raiden was born, uh, we did not know that she had any health complications right off. Everything was fine. I got to go to the hospital and hold her. My whole family was there. Everything was great. A few days later, uh, we get the call that Raiden's being metaflighted to Oklahoma City to Children's Hospital. I didn't really know anything. I know she was in the helicopter by herself. They did not let either of my parents fly with her. They had to drive, and that it was something to do with her heart. Come to find out, she had multiple holes in her heart. Her first surgery she had when she was two weeks old. Um, they were to re the first surgery was to repair the holes in the back side of her heart, and they went in between her ribs on this side to repair them. She got to come home for a little while, 
enjoy some time together. And then when she was six months old, she had open heart surgery. For those of you that don't know, open heart surgery, they break your sternum to repair the holes on the front side of your heart. They say, on average, that your heart is as big as your fist. So, if you can imagine, this is how big my heart is, relatively. A six-month-old infant's heart is relatively the size of their fist as well. Think like a walnut, walnut size. The surgeon came back after um, her surgery and said, the hole in Raiden's heart was the size of his thumbnail. Walnut, thumbnail. It's a fairly sizable hole. It's amazing that um, they're able to fix things like that now. Um, otherwise, who knows what would have happened if this had happened um, 30, 50 years ago. Um, her second surgery uh, was the hardest. She was in the hospital for 20, 72 days. And during that time, there was lots of ups and downs. Some days were better than others. Uh, during her second surgery, she, um, because of a lack of oxygen, she now has cerebral palsy. And then we later learned um, that she had a stroke while she was being delivered. So not only does she have cerebral palsy, but also due to the stroke that affects the left side of her body as well. And also she communicates differently than some of us. She uses sign language to communicate. That does not mean that she doesn't understand anything that you say. She understands everything that you say. Anything that you have to tell her, she totally understands. But the way that she communicates back to you is sometimes a little bit different. She uses sign language or points or uses her iPad. Thank God for iPads. Also, while she was, being, um, while she was in the hospital, she missed out on a lot of things that um, her peers would have been doing at the time. She never really crawled. She went from sitting, rolling over to walking. She was, there was no slowing her down, that's for sure. Also, she never really used a bottle, never. She, how she was fed was through a feeding tube through her nose that went straight to her stomach. To this day, she doesn't use a straw. She missed that whole mechanism, okay? I think that she is the, we've been talking about perseverance a lot in this semester. Mrs. Lazanne spoke of perseverance. Mr. Beauchamp speaks of perseverance. For me, my hero and who I look toward is Raiden and her perseverance. Things that she's dealt with in her life hail in comparison to the things that I've done. If I think I'm having a hard time, I just remember all of the things that I should be thankful for. We are all here today. Thank God for that. We're more alike than different. Something I'm passionate about, and whenever um, they came to me to speak to you, it did not take me long to decide what to speak to you about. I'm passionate about people with disabilities, specifically the language and equality of people with disabilities. Um, I'm going to focus primarily today on the R word. The R word comes from an out-of-date medical term, mental retardation. It was shortened to just the R word, and now to cover that umbrella of people with that disability, we refer to it as intellectual disability. The R word is out of fashion. We do not use it the way that, that it was intended. Ms. Ashcraft, could you play the first video, please? My sister has an intellectual disability. I really like to cuddle with Isabel when Isabel's laying by herself mom, while mom's getting ready to go places or doing stuff. I like to hang out with Isabel and play with her. She's really just perfect. I really, really, really love her. My brother. My sister. My brother. My sister has Down syndrome, but that doesn't define her. He's a piano player. He's a dancer. She's my best friend. And he's a great brother. And when you call him a retard, or even use the word retarded, you take all of that away. Using that word is never funny, no matter how you use it. Even if you're not talking about a person with a disability, it's never the right word to use about anything, ever. Every time we hear it, 
It hurts those of us who love somebody with Down syndrome. It's just wrong. culture highlights this word. It's, be, it's, it's falling out of fashion, thankfully. You see it in movies, especially older movies. It's in the 90s a lot. I grew up with it. You grew up with it. It's everywhere. Pop culture and the evolution of this word feeds the verbal warfare that we have on each other. Think about that. Verbal warfare. It's two heavy hit words. There are several words throughout history that have been used to describe people or harm people in a negative way. You can think of several examples off the top of your head, I'm sure. Um, now, this video highlighted Down syndrome. Raiden does not have Down syndrome. She doesn't. She does not have an intellectual disability. Physical disability, yes. Intellectual, no. So that word does not describe her. That word that you use, that I have used, I admit it, that I have used does not describe people with a disability or without a disability. Do I get upset when people use that word? Not as much as I used to. It used to really infuriate me. I hear it in my room, I hear it in this building. Now do I fly off the handle and yell and scream at you? No. I'll tell you, could you please not use that word, it offends me. And if you ask me why, I'll tell you. The empowerment of those words starts and ends with us. I challenge you and everyone in this building, I would love it if Waller did it um, as a whole, is to go to the rword.org and take the pledge to stop the word to end the word. I've taken it. I challenge you to do the same. We're more like. Oh, we're more like. Thank you. Okay, Mrs. Ashcraft, the second video, please. No, Down syndrome does not slow me down. It's just what I have in me. I, I do have Down syndrome, but that's not going to stop me one bit. See, I live on my own. I clean the house. I do exercise, I walk my dog, she's, a, she's an outside dog, and I got three other brothers. They don't treat me special. My name is Mark Joseph Hubler. I'm from Indiana, a Hoosier fan. See, we're more like the different. My name is Maura Rossi. I am 20 years old. I go to the University of North Florida. I love college. It's the best thing. I'm studying right now career planning and journalism. I'm also taking voice lessons. I want to sing on American Idol and um, kind of win Simon Cowell over. See, we're more alike than different. My goal is to be successful and be an international sensation. My name is Christopher Scott and I'm from Texas. I'm 31 years old and uh, I have Down syndrome. Well, I like my job. I'm a teacher assistant and I work with kids. That's where I get some of my energy from. I like lots of movies. So I like to go dancing, get my groove on. See, we are more alike than different. I am Christy Hockle and I am 29 years old, and I have Down syndrome. Yes, I just joined the gym. I love to exercise. Exercise is my thing. I, I can lift 140 pounds. I just love it. I just love being there. It's really fun. I like to get healthy and strong and skinny. See, we are more alike than different. My mom keeps saying, Christy, you need to lose some weight. I 
am Christy Harkel. I am 29 years old, and I have Down syndrome. Something special just happened to me. My boyfriend asked my dad in the hint of marriage. He's wonderful. He's cute. I love him a lot. I want to be beautiful as a bride. See, we are more alike than different. I'm going to have a big, big wedding for 300 people. I especially love that video because it highlights to you that people with disabilities have the same aspirations and dreams that you do. A career, going to university, getting married, having children. These things are all possible for people with disabilities. I don't want you to count them out just because they're different than you. Because we're more alike. Excellent. I say this to my students all the time. School is a microcosm of life. School is a microcosm of life. Micro, small, right? Cosmo, cosm, cosmos, space. More specific to this case, the world. School is a preparation for real life experiences in a guarded environment. The things that you experience here, you'll take with you the rest of your life. Did you know? that 19% of the U.S. population is living with a disability. That means that the largest minority in our country is people with disabilities. People with disabilities are the largest minority in the country. Think of all of you that raised your hands a moment ago that said that you know someone with a disability. That being said, the odds of you sitting next to a classmate or a friend or a teacher, they are connected to someone that has a disability. The things that you say matter. We see each other almost every day, all day, every day, five days a week. Do you really know everything about the person sitting next to you? I'm sharing a part of my life that many of you didn't know about me. The things that you say matter. Those little insults that you say to each other in class chip away at people and eventually it gets to a point that they can't handle it anymore. That's something that we've talked about in this room ad nauseum. I'm not going to go on. That's not the point of this. I think, to me, Raiden is the embodiment of the theme that we've had all year here. Work hard, be nice. Some people are dealt a different deck than you are in life and have to work twice as hard at things. The things that you do in the morning to get ready to get here, don't take those for granted because they take my sister two or three times as long to do. But she always does it with a smile on her face and love in her heart. Don't take that for granted. <clears throat> so, without further ado, because I know she's about to come out of her seat, I want to introduce to you my hero, the reason that I persevere and why I strive to work hard and be nice and treat people the way that I would want her to be treated, my mom, Regina, and my sister, Raiden. Oh, she's posing for all of you. She loves to take pictures and to dance. Now, if you did not raise, thank you. <laughs> if you didn't raise your hand before because you didn't know someone with a disability, now you do. She's never met someone that she didn't like or a stranger. She'll be more than happy to talk to you. My mom or I might have to do a little interpretation for you. Thank you for letting me speak about this today. It's something that I'm very passionate about. If you want to know, talk to me more about it, feel free. If you want to talk to Raiden, she's going to be here for a little while this morning. Thank you all very much. Remember, oh, let's practice one more time. We're more alike. Thank you.
Finally, this week's videos. Great message with Miss Wiebner. Thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you for uh, bringing your family. Give those guys another round of applause. Thanks for coming all the way down from Alva. Perseverance, another great message on perseverance. We're more alike than different. I think some things, uh, we don't think about that a lot, but we all have a lot of things in common. You guys have been doing a great job this year, really this pa past month, on putting yourselves in a situation to reflect back at the end of the day, the song today, I Lived, the man in the glass, the poem we've talked about, putting yourself in position when you put your head on that pillow tonight 
to have a great day because you've put so much time and effort into that day. That sense of accomplishment, that great feeling in the world when you have done something you've never done before or you've helped somebody else do something they've never done before. You don't get that until you put maximum effort out there. Keep working hard. Um, it's going to be another good week. You've got, uh, got some great weather coming up. You guys have got another uh, big week of testing. This week, next week, we've got some things going on with planners today. You guys bring your planners to lunch. Me and Miss Peters, some counselors, will meet you guys out there to take care of you. Um, how about we give the eighth grade a little uh, applause? We get them out of here early today. All right, eighth grade, we'll leave you guys out.